Good morning, Woodlands Classical Academy. Welcome to Storytime with Miss Bannon. We're going to be reading a story today about an Easter bunny, or maybe just a bunny. The story today is The Tale of Peter Rabbit, written by Beatrice Potter, illustrated by Wendy Rasmussen. It's about Peter Rabbit runs into trouble. However, when he ignores his mother's request that he stay out of Mr. McGregor's garden. The Child's World, The Tale of Peter Rabbit. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits, and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. Now, my dears, said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. So I want you to be thinking about the problem in this story. Your father had an accident there. He was put in a pie by Mrs. McGregor. Now run, run along and don't get into mischief. I am going out. Then old Mrs. Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella and went through the wood to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane together to gather blackberries. But Peter, who was very naughty, ran straight away. Where do you think he went? Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. You think we have a problem? Let's keep reading and find out. First, he ate some lettuces and some French beans. And then he ate some radishes. And then, feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley. But around the end of a cucumber frame, whom should he meet? But, Mr. McGregor. Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees planting out young cabbages, but he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rake and calling out, Stop, thief! Peter was most dreadfully frightened. He rushed all over the garden, for he had forgotten the way back to the gate. He lost one shoe among the cabbages, and the other among the potatoes. After losing them, he ran on four legs and went faster. So that I think he might have got away altogether if he had not unfortunately run into a gooseberry net and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. It was a blue jacket with brass buttons, quite new. Peter gave himself up for lost and shed big tears, but his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows. A sparrow, I think is a bird, who flew to him in great excitement and begged him to exert himself. Mr. McGregor came up with a sieve. Hmm. Which he intended to pop on the top of Peter, but Peter wiggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind him. He rushed into the tool shed and jumped into a can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had not had so much water in it. Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed, perhaps hidden underneath a flower pot. 
he began to turn them over carefully, looking under each. Presently, Peter sneezed. <sighs> Mr. McGregor was after him in no time, and he tried to put his foot upon Peter, who jumped out of a window, upsetting three plants. Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling with fright, and he had not the least idea what way to go. Also, he was very damp, but sitting in the can. After a time, he began to wander about, going lippity, lippity, not very fast, and looking all around. He found a door in a wall but it was locked and there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and out over the stone doorstep, carrying peas and beans to her family in the wood. Peter asked her the way to the gate, but she had such a large pea in her mouth, she could not answer. She only shook her head at him. Peter began to cry. Then he tried to find his way straight across the garden, but he became more and more puzzled. Presently, he came to a pond where Mr. McGregor filled his water cans. A white cat was staring at some goldfish. She sat very, very still, but now and then the tip of her tail twitched as if it were alive. Peter thought it best to go away without speaking to her. He had heard about cats from his cousin, little Benjamin Bunny. He went back toward the tool shed, but suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the noise of a hoe. Scritch, scratch. Scratch. Peter ran underneath the bushes, but presently as nothing happened, he came out and climbed upon a wheelbarrow and peeped over. The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing onions. His back was turned toward Peter and beyond him was the gate. Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could along a straight walk behind some black currant bushes. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner, but Peter did not care. He slipped underneath the gate and was safe at last in the wood outside the garden. Mr. McGregor hung up the little jacket and the shoes for a scarecrow to frighten the blackbirds. Peter never stopped running or looked behind him till he got home to the big fir tree. He was so tired that he flopped down upon the nice soft sand on the floor of the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking. She wondered what he had done with his clothes. Mm, do you think he's going to get in trouble? It was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in just two weeks. I am sorry to say that Peter was not very well during the evening. His mother put him to bed and made some chamomile tea and she gave him a dose of it she, and she gave a dose of it to Peter. One teaspoon to be taken at bedtime. But Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries for supper. Hmm. So, the moral of the story is, I want you to send me that in an email so that you can earn some PBIS points. What do you think the moral of the story is? You think you better listen to your mom? 
let me know if you're in junior high. I want you to send me a critique of this video. If you're in K through five, please tell me what the moral of the story is. Ask mom or dad, what does moral of the story mean? That means there's a message to be told. If you don't know, rewind and watch the video again. Happy Easter. Have a wonderful week, Woodlands Classical Academy.